Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to talk about behavioral psychology, personalization and collaboration and how that can be a key to your e-commerce success. With me on the show today, Michael Tutek, co-founder and CEO of Prezi.com. His mission is to foster enduring connections between retailers and shoppers. With a background rooted in showroom experience and years in corporate sales, he combines a passion for team leadership and innovative technology to revolutionize online shopping. Recognized as a 2022 recipient of a top 50 small business leaders award, his inspiration lies in aiding retailers amidst the challenging landscape of online retail, promoting local ingenuity and fostering sustainability. So let's welcome Michael to the show. Hi, Michael. How are you today? Good. Thanks, Klaus. How are you? I'm very well. Great to have you on the show. Michael, behavioral psychology is something that not really a lot of merchants have on the list in their daily their day life, but there is a reason. And um, you have been working in brick and mortar and you see obviously online, there's a huge difference in the customer behavior going to a store, a physical store and buying online. Maybe let's start with that. Give me an idea where the differences are. Yeah, no stress. So as you mentioned, you know, I initially worked at... Um, a retailer um, selling basically TVs, big boxes, fridges, laptops, all the electronics. And it was really, really easy to see why, you know, in-store converts so high and why the average order values are so much higher. So, for example, in, in that example, in my personal example, the store I, I worked at sold 40% was the conversion rate. So 100 people walked into the store and 40% of them purchased. And the average order value in the store was about five or $600. When we compared this to the same business online, the conversion rate was one and the average order value was around 180, 200. And when you start digging into this, a lot of it comes down to just the guided selling approach that you get. So most of the time you walk into a store and you speak to Michael or Tanya or Klaus or, or Jessica and they help guide you through the process. Anything from... You're looking at a fridge, a TV, um, pair of leggings, a shaver, um, a tent. Like it doesn't matter. It's all about guiding you through a process. So they understand, they work with you. What do you need the product for? And then from there, they start looking at additional things like what other products do you need? So you're going camping. Do you need an esky? Um, hey, we even have um, generators. Do you need um, certain lighting? Um, do you need a swag? And all of a sudden, you can start to see why it builds into an experience where you're not actually shopping for a product, you're shopping for an outcome. And all this is tied into just the, the human psychology, if that makes sense. No, it makes perfect sense. I'm, most likely you come with a problem and you want to find a solution. So you want to find the outcome there. And again, there's no difference between doing that online or in store. Now, I think it even makes a difference if you buy, uh, I don't know, fashion or camping gear. Um, you have a goal in mind usually, unless you're completely only browsing. But how how can you basically put the the experience that you have in a brick and mortar store? How can you bring that online? What kind of elements are necessary to increase your conversion rate and the average order value? Yeah, yeah, no, you're you're right. So I think it, between industries. Um, it doesn't really vary that much. Like even if you think about, let's say you're going, let's say you have a wedding and you've, you, you don't have a suit. You haven't worn a suit for a while. So you need to go in, you need to get a suit. I mean, I did this a couple of years ago. You know, you go in, I've got, I've got a wedding on. I need a suit. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm going to buy a shirt. I'm going to get a new belt. I lost some weight. I need some shoes. And all of a sudden you're walking out with a $1,200 or $2,000 suit and a whole kit, including shoes, belt, socks, the kitten caboodle. So ultimately bringing that online, it, it's really not as hard as people would think. It's just, it's one of those applications that on face value, it doesn't feel like it's something that is easily doable, but like it, it really is. So like for example, our, our business and, you know, I initially had this idea to bring it, to bring that in-store shopping experience online was effectively just to, you know, plug, plug a piece of technology into a site that does all the hard work for you. So, you know, it, it will learn about the person. It will understand what they're there for, what they're trying to achieve, everything from what size they are to when is the event, what are they looking to do? And then from there, it's really like pretty straightforward to, you know, show products and build out bundles as well as just 
help people understand that this is the right, for example, mattress for them, or this is the right um, look or kit for them, if that makes sense. No, it makes perfect sense. Uh, personalization, definitely a key, and you see it all over the interwebs that um, companies try to personalize the, the customer experience as much as possible. Now, when it comes to bundles, that's an interesting topic um, because no one wants to be sold to or up upsold to. So you need to be uh, very smart about that on how to put that together. Um, how do they do it online? So mm. is there a, a standard bundle or can that be dynamic or what kind of ways can you yeah, use? Yeah, I think I think this is, this is the general issue. As you said, no one wants to be sold to. So when you walk into a store and you say to somebody, hey, I'm looking for a TV. And then you go through and then you find the right TV. And then from there, If the sales assistant didn't ask you, do you need a wall bracket? Do you need a cable? Um, do you need a cabinet? You would look at that as poor customer experience in the store. If you walked into a store and I just helped you with the TV and there are, there are wall brackets there and there are cables there and I just said, cool, Klaus, here's your TV. Thank you. Goodbye. You would feel almost rushed. It would almost, you'd almost look at it like that was a poor experience. So in the store, isn't it funny how doing the upsells is actually considered a better experience? Now, the issue with is online, everybody tries to do all this without asking the questions and building any rapport. So all of a sudden, it becomes very annoying, borderline creepy. So imagine I was looking at a TV in the store and a salesperson saw me and said, oh, Klaus, I, you're going to buy that TV and here is the bracket and here is the cable. You'd go, no, like well, that's weird. Like you don't even, I, I wasn't even looking at buying a TV. I was just browsing. All of a sudden that's e-commerce. So what we're doing is we're building that personal experience where you ask the question. So you walk, you go on a website and you say, okay, what are you looking for? TV, no stress. What's the TV for? Is it for a theater? Is it for the main room? Is it for a bedroom? Is it for children? Is it for adults? Do you have any brand preferences? Are you using it for streaming, for gaming, whatever it might be, indoor, outdoor? And we go, hey, here is the right TV for you. There you go. And then you say, okay, on the actual website, by the way, if you need a wall bracket and if you need a cable, here are some options. Now, all of a sudden, you're not being sold to, you're being serviced. And that's what we're doing in store but that's what you need to bring online. And that will, that's the whole premise of what we've been trying to do. We've been working on this piece of technology that allows you to do that. And then it builds into that same feeling like you go and do that onto a great website that we work with and you go to a competitor and then you will feel like the experience via the competitor is actually really, really poor because you're not being sold to, you're being serviced. It's different. Mm -hmm. I, I like the comparison between being sold to and serviced. Huge difference there. Now, you're working with, with hundreds of sellers out there, big companies, Target, Purple, Canon, Dell, and so on and so forth. So obviously, they have a huge budget. Not everyone has that. But give me an idea or maybe a, a, a case study. You don't need to, to name a brand on how the implementation works. How Because we're not, we on a podcast right now, so maybe like a visual idea yeah. of how it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we work with um, small companies. We work with, you know, mid-sized companies. Most businesses, you know, starting working with us would do, you know, four or five million of GMV, obviously all the way to the Dells and the Canons and, and the Purples and Targets. Implementation is pretty easy. This is part of the, I guess, um, taboo that we're, we're trying to squash and we're trying to get through. Um, these are not bigger than Ben-Hur projects. So, for example, the way it works is we suck in all your data, And that could be through a Shopify API. It could be through a Magento BigCommerce data feed. Like we've even gone as far as using Facebook feeds or directly into a PIM. Once we have all that data, then effectively, effectively we go with, what are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to catch a, capture zero party data because cookies are getting killed next year? So you want emails and profiles? Or do you want to look at bundling and stacks? Or do you want to look at just general bringing in-store experience online and get conversion rates? So then we start building out these, we call them journeys. We build out these journeys in our actual platform. So just like you would like a, a visual merchandising, like a search spring or something like a Nosto, there is an e-commerce. We have a platform um, where we build out all these journeys and then you physically copy and paste them onto your website. 
wherever you see fit. So you might want it as a pop-up, you know, before you leave the site, hey, couldn't find the perfect shaver for you. Let us help you out. Once you plug it in, it goes onto the website via JavaScript. So for example, um, Guitar Center, use it on their homepage as a gift finder. Find the perfect guitar, pedal, keyboard, guitar case for your loved one, for your friend, for your partner. So implementation is pretty straightforward. Normally we get live within a matter of weeks. Mm -hmm. Now with the implementation, obviously you have different platforms. Um, you were talking about Shopify. Um, there might be email platforms and whatsoever. What kind of KPIs, uh, what kind of APIs do you have to, to connect to other platforms? Yeah, so with, with data, it's pretty easy. Like a Shopify API or just a normal standard um, data feed. With the actual e-com platforms, you just need JavaScript. So it's just a JavaScript plugin. So, you know, into Shopify, you just plug into a theme.liquid or whatnot. It's, it's very simple. So we don't even need a direct connector because they all just run JavaScript. It's the same as when you plug in your chatbot or, or something like that. And then with the other platforms, say, for example, email marketing like Clavio, .digital, Amasis, we have APIs directly in there. So for example, let's say you're looking for a pair of leggings and you go on to Lorna Jane and you and it says, hey, um, what are you using the leggings for? High intensity, yoga, general, figures out what you're interested in, understands your sizing. Then you put in your email, could be for a, for a discount, could be for a VIP offer, whatever. All that data is then sent to your Clavio instance, your Amasis instance, your um, dot digital instance and then now with all that you can start targeting that person and then you can and that's all directly just through an api mm -hmm. i want to take a step back where we started with behavioral psychology um obviously not everyone is a psychologist so um understanding a customer or what they do or what's happening in in their mind while they're going to to browse your store might be not on your plate how do you help with that and going from there i want to look into how does it work with collaboration so do you work um with that factor as well yeah so i think when it comes to the psychology there's lots of different things that brands actually do do that uses psychology but the difference is when you actually make a conscious effort to understand it then you can use it in much powerful ways so for example in psychology there's something called loss aversion And that's pretty simple. Loss aversion is just, hey, if I don't buy this now, I'm going to miss out. You know, it's just a timer. You've only got X offers left. Um, this discount is applicable for 12 hours. Another example is social proof. You know, oh, all these people bought this. 237 people bought this in the last 24 hours. What we like to do with us, it's more about the journey experience. So, If you go onto one of our journeys and use our quizzes, when you click get results, you'll see a little delay. So let's go, you answer four or five questions about your dress that you're looking for and you go find my dresses. It will actually have a delay and we'll delay it for sometimes three, four, five, six seconds. And, it, and it's thinking, looking for your perfect dress, finding your perfect dress. That's all fake. It's all artificial. So what happens in psychology is If you show people results too quickly, they're just very unlikely to trust it. They're just more like, think about it like this. This is the psychology of a human being. I go on my your website. I give you 10 minutes or five minutes or three minutes of my precious time. And now I've done this quiz. You've shown me results so quickly. It almost feels like, did you even consider what I told you? Did you even think about it? So in psychology, it's called perceived or heuristic effort. It's all about it. we intentionally delay the results so that the actual shopper understands and feels there's lots of smarts going on. So we've considered it. That's just a simple example. Another example we do is in psychology, there's something called mirroring. So you may be familiar, but if you meet someone that's very extroverted and you act extroverted, you build rapport. If you meet someone very introverted, um, if you meet someone that's very loud and moves their hands and is very, very, They use a lot of body language and you do the same, you build rapport. So a lot of this is when a shopper goes on your site and does things, instead of making it or trying to hide it that you know stuff about people, because that's where trust comes in and they don't trust you, 
you actually make it obvious. Hey, I've listened to you, I've heard you, and I've recommended this. So often, for example, if you do a quiz on Prezi, let's go mattresses. At the end, when it gets results, it will go, hey, based on the fact that you and your partner are both interested in, uh, say, firm or soft beds in a king size that is good for partner disturbance, we recommend below three. So it's about reiterating and mirroring back what the person is already thinking and saying, mm -hmm. because you're more likely to get an outcome, which is, you know, a sale or even an email or a click or less bounce or what, whatever it may be. But all these things is what happens in the real world. And when someone who actually understands psychology looks at it, they go, I know what's happening here in the mind of the person. And then you can easily bring that, you know, that, that, that toolkit, um, that, that conversion rate toolkit, if you will, online. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I, I have heard about one of the examples that you gave me before was delaying a result, which increased the results for the, the um, online business that was using that massively. So I, I love that. And that's something that you usually don't get when building trust. Normally, it's like put a label here and put trust mark there and whatsoever. But this is really like... Um, lift behavioral psychology from a store into the online world. Now tell me a little bit about results, KPIs. Uh, what kind of differences did you see after implementing the solution? Yeah, so I mean, with the behavioral psych delay for context, we when we first started the business, we didn't do it. So our results, they actually create results in like 100, 200 milliseconds. So we just let them render as soon as, because naturally when you first do it, it's like, hey, straight away, fast is quick. And we found when we put the delay in that we were like doubling all our like engagement rates. So it wasn't, you know, a little bit of an increase. It was, it was dramatic. Now, generally speaking with Prezi, um, the goals is conversion rate, building lifetime value, capturing emails and more revenue. What we typically find is for our quizzes and our journey software, when a shopper uses Prezi, they're anywhere from 30% to 300% more likely to buy over a 30-day period. So if you mm -hmm. get a good percentage of your audience using Breezy or any quiz software, you know, you're going to convert 50 to 300% more for that target audience. And then from there, capturing emails, it, it, it really varies, but we often do see brands doubling their email capture rates when implementing us, and we often see them doubling their revenue by their email channels. So ultimately... It's, all, it's just about creating a new way of shopping that is completely personalized to the individual, that shows the care, that takes into account psychology, brings that in-store experience online. Um, and with that, you're, you're, going to, you're going to sell more, you're going to convert more, you're going to have higher average order values. That's just, just, it's just human nature. Mm, very true. Walk me through the typical onboarding process for a new user. What steps are involved? How does the time like, timeline look like? Simple. Um, so once we once once you sign up, we have an onboarding team that will literally onboard you, get all your data, get your data for Shopify, for example, five minute job. We get all your data, uh, Magento feed, five minute job, get all your data. From there, we just establish what your goals are. Like not everyone's goals is conversion rate. Some people's goals is um, lifetime value because they're more omnichannel. Some is reducing CAC. Some is capturing emails. We just understand that. And then from there, we start building out the journeys. Um, normally, brands can get live within you know, a few weeks, um, up to a couple of months if you're a big brand. So it's, it's not a very hard project. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Now, talking about project work, next question will be probably a bit difficult to answer, but what's the pricing structure that you work with? So it does vary. It does vary. It, we typically price on utilization and number of domains. So, you know, if, you're, if you've got a site in, say, the US, Canada, Australia, UK, Singapore, that's obviously priced different to just America. Um, and utilization. So does it get used 10,000 times a month, 100,000 times, a million times? We typically do work with more mid-markets. So our packages do start at around 30,000 US a year and expand up on that. But it all just depends on what you're trying to do and how many times you and how many times it gets used mm -hmm. okay before we come to the end of the coffee break today is there anything that you want to share with our listeners that we haven't covered yet 
No, I think um only thing worthwhile mentioning is that um a lot of a lot of brands are having um and struggling with cost of acquisition. So, you know, one of our new new products, one of our new um features was to help that. So we we've also built a like brand to brand post checkout referral network. We call it next buy. But long story cut short, Klaus, is what it does is you go to say Lorna Jane sell leggings and post checkout. When you buy, you can actually then cross promote to another brand, like say a hair and beauty brand, and you can basically swap customers post checkout. So we built that to help retailers reduce CAC. So all I'll say is for for the audience is our whole premise is to help retailers just be like sustainable and um be alive and moving forward and thrive. So that the two biggest issues in e-commerce typically is rising CAC and um, building trusted experiences. So Apple's killing tracking, Google's killing cookies, um, CAC is going through the roof. Like we would have seen, but recently, you know, Google and Yahoo, they're now starting to um, target things as spam. If it gets 0.3% of spam clicks, um, if you send over 5,000 emails a day, which every every like reasonable retailer will do. So all these things, we get it. And our whole premise is just to help businesses do that so that we're not just at the mercy of basically Google, Meta, and these large companies that dictate like your revenue lines. So I think from that point of view, like any business is happy to talk, just get an understanding and learn about what we do. You know, reach out, jump on, um, jump on prezi.com, fill in a form and, and just let's see if we can help you out and help you thrive and survive. Very cool. I will put the links in the show notes. Um, so it will be just one click away and people can reach out to you directly. Michael, thanks so much for giving us an overview. I think there were some really great examples in there, how behavioral psychology can make a difference and can be transferred from the brick and mortar world into the online world. Thanks so much for your time today. No worries. Thanks, Klaus. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision. But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community. And remember, your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.